All right, ladies and gentlemen, so here we are with Kenya the tortoise. Mikkel, this is Megan's brother right here. He is Kenya's owner. What you doing right now? Giving her a little bath? Yeah, I'm giving her a bath. And nice. Take her outside, let her walk around a little bit. Cool. Now, how often do they need these baths right here? Uh, I do it once a day. Daily? You gotta yeah. do, they gotta do this daily? Yeah, I gotta <laughs> do it daily. Wow. What are you gonna do when she gets to be like 200 pounds like they say that she's gonna be someday? She bathed herself, yeah. don't need a bath, yeah. water hose, okay. <laughs> the question that I had that I was just talking about, maybe one of you in the comment section can shed some light on this. I've always wondered how like cats and other animals like that, how they can, how or even if they can discern like what's a living thing and what isn't. Like I picture if I was a cat and I see like maybe like a robot, like a Roomba, maybe a vacuum cleaner. There's, You get what I mean? There's all sorts of technology that has the ability to move around and stuff. And obviously like a living thing right here, a tortoise, for example, moves around similarly to how maybe a Roomba would move around. So if I was an animal, I'm thinking, how would I even be able to tell what's a living thing versus what isn't a living thing? Or do I even have a concept of what's living and what isn't? Do I, just, do I not even have that concept? And so you were saying that you think it's pheromones, which I don't know what that is. Yeah, some sort of, so like, I guess the pheromones is just kind of like the smells or whatever that they emit off themselves it sound like kind of signals yeah or so, you, so you think it's some sort of hormonal thing maybe yeah, that they can so. sense yeah huh i'm sure one of you is a, some sort of scientist in the comment section so y'all can shed some some sort of biologist who knows the answer to this so if you're that person let me know in the comment section yes. is kenya trying to get out is she or what's she trying uh, to do I, I assume she is she does it Every single time she just tries to get out. I think she knows she's outside. But I usually wait till the water gets cool. Uh, is this one of those she needs to soak in it for her own good? You can get out in a second, yeah. sort of a thing. Yeah. It's like the little child, the human baby, trying to rush to leave the kitchen and go play outside. But parent knows you got to eat your greens, you got to eat your vegetables before you go play. It's for your own good. So this is probably that kind of thing, I guess. I, I believe the water. What we looked up was the water is meant to make them use the restroom. The water stimulates yeah. like potty movement and stuff. Well, she's about to get out right now. She looks yeah. like she's climbing pretty dang good. Yeah, no, she <laughs> gets out there. It does, she doesn't always use the restroom in there, but if she doesn't do it in there, then she'll usually do it in the yard or something. Oh, I've already had my. I've already had my fun trying to make an animal use the restroom when Loveland was a baby and she was sick. We had to try to stimulate bowel movement because she was constipated and couldn't go. I tried the triangle method and all these different things to get her to go and me and Megan just couldn't do it so the vet had to do it for us. Yeah, I was basically, I don't even want to think about that for a long time. This thing, let's see what you got. I remember that turtle that I had a few months ago. That thing was deceptively fast. When you were watching her, she would move all slow, but you'd get distracted and look away for about 20 or 30 seconds. Next thing you know, she'd end up all the way across the yard and we'd be like, what the heck? It's like, literally they, they, they only show their speed when they know that people aren't watching them. They just don't want people to realize how fast they are. There's this one time that, so my dad's house obviously is not super duper close to my grandparents' house in walking distance necessarily for an animal. So I remember me and Megan, we had some Starbucks and we had like a leftover we didn't like. So we were trying to feed it to the animals to see if any of them would take it. And Pig Lola must have smelt it from my dad's house and she ran all the way, however long of a walk it is for a tiny pig. And it was about 30 seconds and she basically made it across the entire property over the however many acres in almost no time. And it was just astonishing how fast she went you give a pig some dairy and you watch how fast they go trying to get it this is cool right here watching oh my this is mikhail these are some crazy looking faces that, the, that she's making right here as she eats yeah. this is the funniest looking thing i've ever seen in my life oh my goodness her little tongue sticking out this is like stuff you would see on national geographic not to, not to toot my own horn or anything, but my camera is impeccable. I'm using a cell phone also on top of that. I don't have a professional camera like a lot of people, a lot of photographers will use and different things like that. I'm just using my regular iPhone camera. I have an iPhone 13 Pro Max, so it is one of the more recent cameras. But 
for any of you that are big into pictures and videos, I think you could probably save a lot of money on just kind of getting a good phone that does a two-in-one. It has all the functions that a phone has, but it has a great camera too. I think you could save a lot of money by investing in a good phone rather than a really expensive camera because a good phone is much cheaper than a highly expensive professional camera. And this right here is impeccable quality. So just a little tip, a little bit of advice for any of you thinking about things like that. I know that Megan and her family had a phot photography business and I always talked about how if I was a professional photographer, I would just use my iPhone to record. And because we compare the quality, we, when we made clay, we compared the quality and more of you actually thought the, that my iPhone camera captured the clay earrings in better quality than Megan's family's professional camera did. And like, that's true. But Megan said, imagine how a customer would feel if they saw their photographer show up with a phone and they were recording stuff. It would probably give really, really wrong vibes. And <laughs> I can't argue with that. I ain't gonna lie. If I showed up to football or something and they told me they had a professional photographer or cameraman and I saw that when I got there, I'd probably be a little skeeved out too. A little bit like skeptical. Like, eh, is this really the best thing? I'm sorry, Mikhail. I can talk all day if you haven't learned that. It's all right. <laughs> oh, I, I get, I forget. I'm in my own world over here, is watching Kenya forge through all these grains, and I forget Mikhail's having to sit here and listen to it all. Normally, it's just you guys that watch the videos who have to endure all of it. <laughs> this is dang cool, though. This is so cool. I love this. I feel like I could watch this all day. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I think it's probably time for me to go ahead and wrap this video up. With that said, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Y'all be sure to let me know in the comments what kind of stuff you guys want to see. I hope you all have an amazing day. And as I always say, your boy Elio.